So inflation at its core is a hidden tax on us, unlike the public in general. Hey guys, this is Mina. Welcome back uh, to another video. Uh, I really appreciate the, everybody who watched the other video. I got a lot of uh, positive feedback from it and a lot is probably like three, but that's a lot for me, so don't judge me. So in this video, uh, I'm gonna sort of touch upon and complete the circle uh, of understanding the process of money creation uh, by touching upon two very important pillars of that system, which is inflation and interest. A lot of us know what they are. However, when we start taking a deeper dive, we understand and we contextualize uh, these concepts. So, uh, and if you didn't watch the last video, it will tremendously help you in uh, sort of following along with this video. We'll put a link somewhere up here. Uh, just as a brief explanation, so we were talking about how money was created, so the central banks essentially, if they print a million bucks, the banks are legally entitled to multiply that by about nine times, essentially creating another nine million dollars out of thin air. So this is called the money multiplier. So in most economies, it would be a 10% reserve, that means the money multiplier is times nine. So your commercial bank, whenever you go to deposit some money, they can multiply that by nine on their books and give that money out. So the bank took your money, they multiplied it by nine, everything is great. So the question right now, which is very important and it's a little bit elusive actually, uh, where, where does this money get its value? Like before we said it was backed by gold, now it's not. So where do we get this value from? Generally speaking, any dollar derives its value from the goods and services available in the economy. So I'm doing you a service, you're selling me a piece of furniture, I go buy a car. These goods and services are giving the dollar its value because I want your dollar and you want my service. So this brings us into the factor where, okay, since every dollar has to be backed by goods and services to give it value, so what happens when the money is multiplied by nine? What happens when this lovely bank creates nine million dollars out of nothing so we would assume that the goods and services have also multiplied by nine. Sometimes that's not the case. So what happens is the dollar supply increases, but the goods and services did not, which in turn devaluates your dollar. So your dollar is no longer able to get you the same amounts of goods or services, hence inflation. So once the, the bank created this uh, fantastic new money, and we know that there's not enough goods and services to back it to give it exact same value as your existing money. So this is essentially how it drives its value. This is the existing money supply. Let's assume it's like that. Okay, so this is the value of the current existing money supply. There's not enough goods and services to support this new money. So what happens is it essentially steals its value from here. So this starts losing a little bit of value and transfers it over right here. So this lost value and gave it to, to this amount of money. So the value is the same. However, the money is more, which essentially means every individual dollar has less purchasing power because it's inflated. So in economic crises such as the one we're in or like uh, past ones, uh, usually the advice we get from the government or the central banks or whoever makes these rules is, oh, let's lower the interest rates. Let's increase the money supply. Yay, we'll fix the economy. But Lowering interest rates is equal to increasing the money supply. Because lowering interest rates means you and I will be more, we'll have more courage, we'll go to the bank, let's borrow more money so we could start creating businesses or whatever the case is. Uh, but increasing the money supply in turn means inflation. So like, uh, I don't know if it's a fraudulent system or it needs to be finely tuned. It definitely needs to be finely tuned. However, they never say let's devalue your currency. Let's uh, rob the people who saved of the value that they saved. Because you've worked a whole, they've worked like three years and you saved every single dollar and you put it in the bank. And then something like this happens and all of a sudden all you saved, it's already they, they took a chunk out of it, basically. So inflation at its core is a hidden tax on us, unlike the public in general. So the real deception here is when you distort the value of money without 
explaining it to folks and okay guys this is what we're doing so we can help increase or boost the economy but you got to explain it to people that's not how it happens it's usually sold to us like this is something good the government is helping out whatever the case is so my question boils down to this if this the issue is uh, how do we solve this inflation crisis or how do we solve this how in the name of the Lord is the solution, oh, let's create more money or inflate the currency? It's just, I don't know. So like, the, the, let's just tone down the drama a little bit, but the fractional reserve system inherently is inflationary. This has its pros, so don't get me wrong, this is not all wrong, this is how we grow as an economy. However, things need to be under control and who is, whoever is in control of the money supply needs to be the people in a way. So. The system being bad or good is kind of irrelevant and is not the point of this video, but the, the, the reason behind this explanation is there are people out there that understand the system, which are the bankers or whoever on whatever that, whoever those people are, but they are able to work with the system and make a lot of money. However, we, the general public, don't understand it and we're working, a, we're playing a completely different game and then we were like, oh, why did I lose? Well, because we're not playing the same game. So this brings us to the second concept, which is the application of interest. So the application of interest is another pillar to this, uh, to how this system operates, because at the core base of what it is, money is essentially equal to debt. It's nothing more, nothing less. It is actually debt. So don't think of your money as anything else but debt, because every single dollar that is in circulation is owed to someone plus interest. So in reality, every dollar that is circulating out there is running around in the economy, going from hand to hand, from bank to bank, from business to business, is owed to someone and is owed always plus interest. So that brings us to the point that every single dollar out there is in debt to someone plus interest. Where does this interest come from? Well, the solution again is more money. So it's, this is a pretty much a cycle and it keeps running and it keeps flowing just because it keeps going on. You give me money, I give you money black inter plus interest, and it keeps going on. Uh, where it gets a little bit tricky what, when this circle stops. Consumer confidence drops, consumer spending drops, issues happen in the economy, all these things trigger a halt. So the whole system will continue working only if there is ultimate trust, so we all trust the dollar, trust the system, we keep working, 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 and spending, 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 so the system can continue to run. Going back a little bit here, so since all the money is formed out of debt and is circulated through commerce and businesses, people sort of become detached from the reality of it, and a disequilibrium sort of exists, and then we are forced to compete against each other in the labor market in order to pool enough money for ourselves and our families to cover our living costs and just be thankful for our existence. So um, as backwards and as bizarre as all this may sound, but the application of interest shows us that the money owed is always exceeds the money available, the money that we have. So unfortunately, a, a perpetual deficit is quite literally built into the system's core, which means that defaults, bankruptcies are all an unavoidable and inevitable result. Unfortunately, uh, I, I know this sounds a little bit depressing, but it's basically like playing a very shitty, shitty game of musical chairs, where someone has, is always gonna be left out, someone is gonna be left holding the short end of the stick, and hopefully that's not us. So that's it for, for this video. Uh, I really appreciate whoever watch till the end here uh legend has it that if you like and subscribe you're not partaking that shitty game of musical chairs but who knows just a little like and subscribe will go a long way a comment would be fantastic as well so if anybody has any questions any ideas uh, some of y'all are very creative and you gave me a lot of ideas so i appreciate that if anybody has any of those leave it in the comments or dm me whatever it is i would sincerely appreciate that you stay happy stay healthy and have a good one.